Book the Fourth, Recalled to the Light. Chapter 34. Kill them, even if they're already dead. Reader, you did not forget about our small mouse, did you? Back to the light. That was what Gregory whispered to him when he wrapped Despero in his napkin and placed him on the tray. And then Mig, after her conversation with Roscuro, carried the tray into the kitchen. And when she saw Cook, she shouted, It's me, Midgery So, back from the deep downs. Ah, lovely, said Cook. And ain't we all relieved? Mig put the tray on the counter. Here, here, said Cook. Your duties ain't done. You must clear it. How's that? shouted Mig. You must clear the tray, shouted Cook. She reached over and took hold of the napkin and gave it a good shake. And Despero tumbled out of the napkin and landed right directly plop in a measuring cup full of oil. Ack, said Cook. A mouse in my kitchen, in my cooking oil, in my measuring cup. You, Mig, kill him directly. Mig bent her head and looked at the mouse slowly sinking to the bottom of the glass cup. Poor little Meesey, she said, and she stuck her hand into the oil and pulled him out by his tail. Despero, gasping and coughing and blinking at the bright light, could have wept with joy at his rescue, but he was not given time to cry. Kill him, shouted Cook. Gore, said Mig. All right. Holding Despero by the tail, she went to get the kitchen knife. But the mouse tail, covered as it was in oil, was slick and difficult to hold on to. And Mig, in reaching for the knife, loosened her grip and Despero fell to the floor. Mig looked down at the little bundle of brown fur. Gore, she said. That killed him for sure. Kill him even if he's already dead, shouted Cook. That's my philosophy with mice. If they're alive, kill them. If they're dead, kill them. That way you can be certain of having yourself a dead mouse, which is the only kind of mouse to have. That's some good sophosophy. That is, kill them even if they're already dead. Hurry, you cauli ear, cauliflower ear fool, shouted Cook. Hurry. Despero lifted his head from the floor. The afternoon sun was shining through the large kitchen window. He had time to think how miraculous the light was and then it disappeared and Mig's face loomed into view. She studied him, breathing through her mouth. Little Meesey, she said, ain't you going to skedaddle? Despero looked for a long moment into Mig's small, concerned eyes, and then there came a blinding flash and the sound of metal moving through the air as Mig brought the kitchen knife down, down, down. Despero felt a very intense pain in his hind quarters. He leapt up and into action. Reader, he scurried, he scurried like a professional mouse. He zigged to the left, he zagged to the right. Gore, shouted Mig, missed him. Ain't that a surprise, said Cook, just as Despero scurried under a crack in the pantry door. I got the little Meesey's tail, though, said Mig. She bent over and picked up Despero's tail and held it up, proudly displaying it to the cook. So, shouted Cook, what good will that do us when the rest of him has disappeared into the pantry? I don't know, said Mig, and she braced herself as Cook advanced to ponder, intending to give her a good clout to the ear. I don't know.